Hello everybody, it's the uh, duty paid here today and uh, hope you're all having a good day. Rather cold in uh, London. Let's get a start on the uh, minty, uh, and he says minty pie, minty synth. This is a project I uh, unpacked the other day on the um, mailbag. Um, hopefully this camera setup is okay. I tried looking over my shoulder but I thought that was a bit too far so I know it's going to be 90 degrees from you. Hope it's not too uh, sort of sideways, but you kind of imagine if you're sort of looking over my shoulder. I'm not too sure though. Let's have a look at camera. I think it'd be alright. For the uh, four people that probably watch this video. <laughs> right, I am um, soldering today with a lead um, base solder mainly because uh, I got this from work they were chucking out all the lead solder years back and uh, I sort of kept a few of these back otherwise it would have gone in the bin quite literally so I've got my solder I've got my soldering iron um, this is one from RS which I did a uh, unboxing of got my instructions here I'm going to be following instructions well <laughs> I don't know how to make this kit otherwise I probably could work it out, but the resistors are not marked. There's a smart R1 and R2. And I've got my little tester with me so we can test, see how the uh, quality of the components are. So the first instruction, we we'll begin with resistor R1 and R2. Make sure that's in camera. And they are a 10K. So 10K is the um, brown, black, orange. So uh, let's just stick this in the... Uh, Parts tester. We will see what that gives us. So uh, 9821 ohms. Well, these are plus and minus 10% with gold. Gold 10? 5. Seem a little bit out of spec. Should be fine. So if we pop these in, let me just check that you can all see that. If you have a bend of resistor, then uh, bending it over your side of your finger like so will normally give you about the same clearance. And just to keep things neat, as you'll be able to see with PCB, we're going to be putting these resistors the same way round, but they're not polarised, so it uh, should not matter. Just take your time when soldering any kit. Understand what parts you have, where they go. Most importantly, you want to... Um, am I taking this off camera? Most importantly, you want to make sure the uh, components are uh, properly in line if they need to be, like electrolytic caps. And build up the circuit, and that's logical. So you want to start with the lowest profile component going up to... the highest one so you don't want to start with a uh, headphone socket for instance do you want that neat a little jump cut there just to get a pair of pliers man handle the uh, components they normally are quite good if you notice I'm not using any magic hand or contraption like so really needed. Nice clean solder iron, not adding any extra wick. And just top tailing these to begin with. Like so. Extra wick, extra flux. People put too much flux onto things, which is completely unnecessary. If you're using a uh, sort of flux core solder, it's completely unnecessary. So uh, that looks good. I'm using a uh, straight tip. I know everyone will be like uh, just a normal pointed tip. Been able to see that? Hopefully so. So the first components are in. Looking good. Right way around. Now obviously you want to uh, just make sure your parts are down. And then just click off the uh, 
clip off the legs nice and close to the solder. See if you don't add extra flux and you don't have it running overboard, but we will just clean up the board at the end. So that's sheet one done. Let's have a look at sheet two. See that in the picture? So we're talking about um, spreading out the leads before doing them. Um, next you can solder the rest resistance place R3 and R4 150s. In the process of elimination I only have three resistors left. So these two are the same. But if we read these from left to right, my old eyes are... Uh, let's have a look. Brown, green, brown. So, uh, that should be 150 ohms, yes. With no multiply. But we will test that. Oops, springy spring. That come up clear? So 147.7 ohms. Might as well just test the other one. So, uh, now with tolerance on resistors, if you were doing, say, uh, you know, highly accurate sort of testing of something, like this is 149 ohms, and that one's more accurate than the other one. If you're doing some highly accurate test equipment, or uh, sending someone into space, and that slight percentage difference could mean um, a big difference. So, what's these? Ah. Oh. Three and four, so uh, I can see. Oh, so R three is there. This is the first synth I've ever built or even uh, gone into. I've always found it quite fascinating. Um, electronic music. We all know about um, normal instruments how they produced sound and then music but electronics producing music that's always uh, interesting just using a pair of resistors resistors pliers to uh, pull these legs down i think these are quite a sharp angle so uh, gold at the bottom that's lucky and the r4 gold at the bottom I remember I went for an interview once and uh, was given a solder test and a sheet to follow of what resistors and uh, none of the resistors were uh, of the right value and the woman had uh, left the room and uh, so I just cracked on soldering those resistors in place and when she came back I said oh I finished that she went none of these resistors are correct value and I was like, well, yeah, you know, not, didn't have them. And she went, oh, and came this long lecture, and I was like, well, you know, didn't want to take up your more time, I just wanted to show you that I could actually hand solder. So, still got the job. There we go. And if you notice, once you get these placed, they won't fall out. These holes are a little bit tight, actually spread between them. The uh, black mat I'm resting on is a heat proof mat normally used in uh, plumbing applications. The old days when you used to solder um, pipes together with a blowtorch, what you still do sometimes, copper pipes. So just testing that I haven't got too much rise on there. Oh, it looks pretty good. Clean it up. My big fat head getting in the way. No, it seems to be quite good. Talking to myself while talking to the world. Maybe I should have done this as a live stream. Probably fridge will uh, kick in in a minute. 
that's resistance and one last resistor in place and R5 is 1.5 kilo ohms so we will just test that component 1.5 is a uh, brown green red One point five, well, that'd be one thousand five hundred ohms, and that's one four seven four. So uh, a little bit out of spec. What's the ten percent? Is one hundred and fifty. So yeah, getting there. And that one will go into R five, which is uh, across here. Feed that one down. Ooh, it's not too off camera. Never really know the secret of filming. Almost like some YouTubers get almost like think the cameras are on their forehead. Being here, I never know where to uh, put the camera, and that isn't in my way, but makes sense for uh, hearing. legs off again. These are a pair of micro shears which I've had ages and that's the board so far with the uh, soldering. Don't know if that coming up on camera. Seems a bit blurred. So moving on. Next we can add the small yellow ceramic capacitors which are here, C1, C2 and C3. Now the uh, easiest way to do these, you can cut them off, but it's always worth giving yourself as much leg as possible. These are on the old fashioned bandolier. Just pull it out. The glue's got to ease of it. Ah, got it. There we are, these are the same value. Don't need to worry about the uh, value and the same way around. So, uh, it actually say, didn't say any things. So, these are um, 118, so probably about 120 nanofarads. So, these go in C1, C2, and C3. So, findy, findy. Oh, so there you go, across the board. Oh, aren't they small? Probably should have best start with the uh, caps first. Cut these off. Pop these into place first. I must say I'm using a leaded solder, which is still available, and uh, I won't be uh, chewing it, and I won't be selling this. So, uh, if I was selling these as a kit, then you'd have to use a um, lead-free solder. Leaded solder is far easier to solder with, and even most um, cheap soldering irons you buy, they will be uh, set up more for uh, leaded solder than solder free. Right? Solder free is a much hotter solder. 
or needs a much hotter tip. At the moment I'm currently at just a shave before 400, um, which gives almost an instant um, melt. I do like a hot iron. No point in holding the um, iron on the piece, heating up the whole leg for about half hour before you uh, get to melt the solder. Cheaper irons with a lower wattage. So if you're after a soldering iron, you have to check. Temperature control is the best because then you can just adjust that to uh, your capabilities. If you like a sort of quick solder, you know what you're doing. So they're all in place. Next we add the photo cell in the same manner. Seen it as far as it goes, don't matter which way round it was. So we have the little photo cell here. Comes in its own little bag. So <laughs> almost self-assembly. Now a photo cell will base its resistance on the amount of ambient light. So the photo cell goes into the LDR, which is the uh, proper name for it. And uh, these have no uh, specific way around. So, uh, Putting that down as far as it will go. It's square peg in a round hole. You can get the legs sort of jammed, so it's worth just sort of popping them up and checking on it. And only solder when you're happy. And always, just uh, if you're unsure, just solder one leg. Then it's much easier to make adjustments. Just solder one leg, and then you can check that it's uh, properly down. And if it's not properly down, then you can just hold the component, wave some um, heat onto it. Maybe that's all that in the shop. I'm currently recording my mobile phone because it gives me 1080p. I do have a uh, stills camera but that's only uh, 720 and uh, gives a lot of, it's a very dark sensor you need about 400 lights. So at the moment I'm in the kitchen it's a dull old day so I don't have that benefit. I have the overlight on, cabinet light which is up here and another little spot hopefully filling in the blanks. So we've got the LDR in. Yeah. So uh, what have we got? LDR. Uh, capacitors. Fully seated. Uh, photo sensor. Next is for the socket. It'll be 18 mega. So the uh, socket is here. Next is the socket of the 18 mega 328. The small notch on the end of the socket. Uh, should point to the left. Should point to the left as a indicator of which way the microcontroller will go later. So, uh, actually, you can see the uh, small indent on there and the small indent on the socket. Now, with the socket, just make sure your legs are straight first, and then be a little case of just dropping that in until it's flat. Now this one looks daunting because there's a lot of little legs but little tip just laying that flat get your solder ready get your solder and iron ready and then you want to just solder one and then solder across the other end and then stop Flick it over and make sure you're uh, fully in and fully flat. Let's have a look. Are you judging that? So if this end is raised up, you can come melt the solder while applying a little bit of pressure. Pop it back into place. If you've done all the legs already and it's uh, off to the wind, then you're going to be in trouble. 
and solder sucker time. So that looks good, notches there, and uh, so get plenty of slack on the solder. Clean your tip periodically, about every four or five, because you get excess solder building up, which carries on to the next joint. And uh, don't ever feel like you need to uh, then go over the board and uh, do the rest. Easy way just to stop, check your work and then flip over the board so then you can uh, solder again There you go, that's why we use a pointed one. So the application of solder, all to the socket. No massive gaps, no dry joints. There we go. So we've got the socket in, which is good. Now, uh, now we add the ceramic oscillator ceramic oscillator must be this chap here which is a three pin device a ceramic oscillator again there's no polarity so it can go either way round and it helps to have some method of holding it vertical while you solder here we've used one clip of a helping hand to support it while you solder what? so where does uh, this Oh, there you go. Let's have a look. Uh, y1, which is there. So, oh, fridge is starting up. Let's just uh, I tried to stop the fridge. Pain in the ass. Recording in the kitchen. So let's just get this done and then um, probably do a little break. Jump cut, wait for the fridge to uh, thing. So they want this vertical, so you can imagine that is vertical here. And then just solder one leg, normally on the outside. So you've got a little bit of solder there. Then you can, can check the component and you can get it nice and vertical, no problems. Uh, actually that's no, 24 minutes in just coming up to 25 so we made a good start tell you what I'm gonna do is uh, instead of doing an hour long video no one's gonna sit there for an hour watching me chat on so <laughs> I'm gonna carry on with this but that's gonna be in the second part cut these up stick them up 
Okay, so that is part one. Um, so far we've put in the resistors, the capacitors, the, uh, what they call this, the ceramic oscillator, the uh, lazy game review sits there, and, uh, whoop, pardon me, and the socket for the 80 mega coming together well. Mm. So, until next time, which will be straight after this, I'm the duty paid, and this is part one of the uh, Minty Synth. Goodbye.